This video is going to be on the uh, HT coils on a Honda VFR. Um, the primary issue with the HT coils is not the coil, it's not the wire, and it's not the uh, plug caps. The, uh, the problem is uh, the degradation in some of the connectors and corrosion. Specifically, these little little caps on here. What what you need to do before you start, you're going to need a uh, a voltmeter, multimeter, um, and a Dremel tool. And when I say a Dremel tool, I mean uh, you're going to need like a little tiny sanding stone right there because you're going to stick this up the. Hang on a second. Okay, you're gonna stick this up the. Uh, you're gonna stick this up the uh, the plugs, and you're gonna take some of the corrosion off the connectors. This is the HT coil. First thing that you have to do is make sure that all these connectors right there are bare. They should be crystal clean in order to get a good contact. When you measure this with the corrosion, it's not gonna come out to. Uh, to the lowest values and when I say the lowest values here it is um, the coil itself that is the secondary coil is going to measure 4.2 ohms the wire is going to measure 1.4 and the entire unit which includes the primary and secondary coils will measure 19.2 similarly if you have a good working coil with the plug wires in right there that means this plug wire plugged into this hole with these connectors bare. The minute you touch your uh, ohm meter on that spark plug cap tip and that right there, the primary and secondary coil will register 19.2 in a blink of an eye. Now if it registers nothing you're gonna have to turn your ohm meter up higher and it's probably not gonna read 19.2 it's probably gonna read something like 26 because the resistance is increased and the electricity that this sends through the whole system is not enough so you're gonna have to keep cranking your ohm meter up higher in order to get a reading. That's to say you you may not even get a reading. Uh, you may get uh, irregular, meaning that you'll a number will flash and then it'll turn off. If it flashes and turns off, keep cranking it until you get more power through the system and then you'll get your final ohm meter, uh, um, your, your, your resistance uh, reading. So, first thing you want to do is you want to sand down or I use a Dremel and a sandstone and I sand down all the connectors. This terminal right here gets very rusted. Um, make sure all these connectors are bare. Make sure the wires that clip to this are clean. If not, you can always rewire it and put a new connector on there. They're just male-female. Actually, it's going to be a uh, female connector. Uh, you can always rewire it if it's too dirty, but I don't think it really is. If it is, just you know, shoot some WD-40 on there, and uh, it should clean up. Um, use your brush here on your rotary or Dremel, and put some degreaser in here and clean the whole thing before you stick this little stand stone and just touch the tip and the little on the side. You don't want to grind too much down. Just touch it so you have a bare connection on there right at the tip and right around the uh, the head of the little pin that's in there. The same thing applies with with uh, with the spark plug caps. Now here is the spark plug cap. When you measure this it should read uh, 1.4 ohms be right there at the tip to that little end tip metal right there. A lot of these are not reading, and uh, as you can see, I got I've got extra ones 
and they are not reading as good as the other ones I'm using right now on my other bike so I'm gonna rebuild all these when you when it's not reading 1.4 ohms or you have to turn it higher it means that you're getting too much resistance in there what you can do is take the wire off the cap and there's really nothing holding the cap now these are these are too corroded I have to sand down the pin inside the pin in here is causing the resistance to be too high so I'm gonna give it a quick uh, sanding at the tip there and then take another reading but uh, I've already sanded down all the clips and all the bolts that hold it and I've already pulled the wires out of the caps now when you pull the wires out of the caps you may get something like that which is flat and you may get something like that which is not flat if you can see there are two wires on it there's an inner core an outer core and then there's a plastic like a shrink wrap on the outside this is how it's supposed to look because this gives the best contact and allows you to push the wire completely in when it's flat although it goes all the way in until it's flush the wire see now I've cut this one down and if you can see when I cut it down I was able to clip the wire and bend it back I'm gonna go ahead and solder this little end right here a little bit so that it gives it a good contact so it doesn't move give it just a light very very small very light soldering and that's gonna give the uh, contact when I push it in to the pin now if you use glue to hold this see once you get it like that with the electric wire this thing snaps right to uh, when you measure it it snaps right on and then uh, once you, you once you bear up that little pin in there there's a pin in here you just take the rotary with this little thing and just go in there and and gently go round and round and touch the tip and it'll make it bare when you stick this in you want to WD-40 it but towards the very end right here so you want to WD-40 this front end so it slides in and then this back end um, I'm gonna use a Permatex silicone sealant to keep the water out because if you don't um, I mean it is waterproof but because of the it's 20 years over 20 years of age and heat and corrosion has uh, invaded some of these I'm gonna go ahead and uh, beef it up a little so you can use shrink wrap in there or in my case I'm gonna just oil it down slide it in there connect it let the lubrication dry up and then put a little sealant on the end so that it makes it waterproof now if you have to go in and pull this um, you're not gonna you know pull the pull the whole thing out but at the same time it's not gonna be permanently stuck because you used a uh, uh, something like Gorilla Glue if you use Gorilla Glue on this and stuck it in there it's not coming out ever again so uh, be careful if you glue this on here now another thing you should know is that if you now I don't know who does it or if anybody does it don't do this but if you grab the wire instead of the spark plug cap like this and pull it out if you grab that wire and pull it out you're gonna probably disconnect that pin from that wire or um, you're gonna you're gonna do some damage to it if you do just go ahead and measure the wire if it's not measuring 19.2 or 19 quickly the minute you touch it then you got some problem going on there it's gonna it's gonna really hamper the performance of the engine insofar as your spark um, I've been having so many so many sparks it came down to my air cutoff valve and my carburetor I switched out the valve with another one I had and um, that in addition to my spark it fires right up now in addition to that it snaps to attention whenever you pull the throttle but it's hard to pinpoint the exact problem because you don't know if it's compression loss you don't know if your valves uh, valves are seated properly you don't know if your valve 
uh, spacing is proper. Uh, you don't know if you got a head gasket com or compression problem. You don't know if you have your uh, exhaust gaskets or exhaust, uh, you know, uh, leaking. But you have to just kind of knock each one out. And it comes down to these. These are the last ones that are going to get rebuilt. And, um, you know, I'm going to try to get it to a, almost brand new. They are pretty expensive. They're about $40, $40 for each of these if you buy them. If you buy just the wires, uh, the wires are $20 for just the wires. Uh, the plug caps, four of them are $20, so they're about five, uh, 20 something, so they're about $5 each. And um, the secondary coils, the HT coils never break down. It's a, uh, it's a magnetic uh, system that's sealed, so there's no, it's completely sealed, so there's no corrosion or no problems with those. I've never had a broken or a damaged uh, HT coil. Uh, these wires, however, there are so many of them that have problems, uh, especially with the corrosion. So, um, like I said, when you take them apart, cut the tip down, use a little uh, box cutter, and cut the tip like that. You'll see the wire stick out. You can trim it or you can fold it over. I chose to fold it over and I'll put a little solder on the tip to hold it you know to give it a look beef it up a little and then I'll plug it back in and to plug it in back in I'm gonna lubricate it a little with something like WD-40 and then I'm gonna put a put the uh, silicone seal on the edge of the on the very end here so that it gives a good seal right on the plug cap right there so you push back in make sure it goes into the pin make sure the pin in here is nice and clean and it should give you that 19.2 reading that snaps like that. Um, I know that these plug caps are the same on the 97, 94 to 97, um, the 90 to 93 Honda VFRs uh, with a carburation have these, the 94 to 97 VFR with carburation has these, uh, the CBR 954 and 919 uh, up to 98, I think have have the uh, have the uh, uh, spark plug caps like these. I'm not 100% sure if the 98 to the 2001, uh, or I, I don't know. I don't know about the 900, but I know the CBR, the CBRs F F2 and F3 have these spark plug caps, and then the F4s are of course uh, fuel injected, so they have the injector throttle bodies and. Uh, plug caps all in one. Alright, so that is the HT coil, how to uh, how to measure them. Um, if you look at the HT coil, when you measure this, the green one, to this over here, that is your secondary winding. It's not the primary, it's the secondary winding. The secondary winding right here will produce 4.2 if it's really good they all produce the same 4.2 or 4.1 usually it's just 4. Point, I think it's 4.2 consistently but you're not gonna get any different even if they're rusted you're not gonna get any any other value on there um, when you measure the whole thing though you're gonna get varying I got 28 on one of these so I knew it was corroded like crazy um, but uh, when you do the full measurement from the tip of the wire when the wire is plugged in here the whole thing including the wire should read 19.2 and there shouldn't be any delay it should be like a snap just like a little electric circuit that goes through there it should light up that spark plug and you're going to notice a difference it's going to be like night and day you're going to notice a difference in your ignition and you're not going to run so rich you know so you don't have to keep on turning your uh you don't have to keep on fine-tuning your uh, your combustion or your air fuel mixture. Uh, once it's sparking right, it's going to burn everything. You don't have to keep on you know uh, changing out your plugs because of fouled plugs or anything like that. It's a worthy thing to redo, I guess. All right, that concludes the tutorial on how to rebuild the HT coils and the spark plug caps.